Hi guys, my name is Giri Malpani. Uh, I'm your host for today, and I'm extremely excited to host the discussion with Satej. Satej is with Dr. Tiem. Uh, Satej, uh, to our viewers, would you like to tell us more about uh, what's Rocketium? What was the motivation behind the idea? How did you get started? How was your journey so far? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to share. Uh, and uh, thanks for having me. This is uh, a pretty interesting app and a very interesting uh, format. I'm looking forward to uh, being a part of this. So uh, I'll Absolutely. just give you a quick overview of uh, myself uh, before I get into Rocket Team itself. So uh, I've been in the industry about uh, 16 years, uh, worked at both uh, large companies like Microsoft and Amazon, um, as well as startups, both in the US as well as uh, in India. So over all of those years, uh, I had a good experience um, experiencing different kinds of companies, uh, organizations, how are they built, how are they solving people's problems. Uh, and develop pretty strong opinions about what is it that I like and what is it that I don't like. So in many ways, Rocketium obviously started off to solve a very specific uh, problem and something that I had in mind. But in many ways, what we are solving didn't really matter because I wanted uh, Rocketium. And when I say I, I mean uh, my co-founder and now the rest of the founding team members. Uh, what we really wanted to do was create an organization that we want to work for. Right? A lot of things we'll not like, but uh, instead of quitting the company, going somewhere else and taking a chance over there, why not fix that over here, right? So uh, really at a broad level, Rocket Team is just that, right? It's an organization that we are trying to build something that we want, um, should endure and where we are building something that we like to do, doing uh, something that we like uh, doing. Um, the actual idea and uh, you know what the product is, is almost uh, incidental. But uh, that said, uh, I'll get into uh, very quickly, I'll give you an overview of uh, what we do as a business, right? So Rocketium started off as a B2C app. It's like a consumer app like uh, Leher, for example. Um, and our idea was that people today are not reading as much. They're spending a lot of time on mobile. So if you make them read stuff, they'll get bored. They'll uh, just jump out of it, uh, not really spend too much time. So can we create a very engaging content platform, kind of like Leher, uh, where people can come and create their content not as video, not as image, but as interactive games. So that's really where we started, right? Uh, but over a year and a half, uh, based on feedback uh, from customers, what we really understood was um, consumer side pay, nothing was going to move because people didn't have a need to create something like this. But instead, as we spoke with a lot of businesses, they told us that they have a need to create images, they have a need to create videos. And what they are doing today with uh, Adobe software is good, but that allows them to do only something which uh, requires designers and only something that uh, is at a small scale. So if you had to make 100,000 videos, uh, 1 million banners, right, you can't really do it with people. So that's really the problem Rocket Team is solving, making images and videos at scale with automation, which combines sure. the best of human creativity and what machines can do, which is just you know rapidly automating and creating stuff. Satish, this is very interesting observation that I noted from your comment. That you said that you voted, you voted from the entire life cycle of a B2C to a B2B kind of a product, right? So I understand, uh, is your product relevant only to the large companies or also to the SMEs and MSMEs? Yeah, so uh, Rocket Team actually is a pretty horizontal product because the way I describe uh, this problem, which is you want to be able to create uh, images and videos at scale. So these could be banners, posters, uh, creators for ads, something that you want to send in emails and whatnot. That need is actually universal, right? Every business wants to communicate with their customers. And when they communicate, like I said, you could communicate with text. You could communicate with voice. You could communicate with image, video. So our assertion and observation is that users like video, they like image, they don't want to read, especially when they are on mobile. So when the communication from a business to customer has to happen, we are saying it should be visual. And so every business has that need. But Rocketium, over the last uh, five years that we've been running it, we've figured out that you can't be everything to everyone. You can't sell a product to every customer. So we have narrowed it down. We have said that, okay, we'll not try and go after every customer, we'll focus on a small niche because that is a niche that is fast growing. There is uh, you know, tremendous opportunity over there. Um, sure. And there is a very big dramatic impact that we can have. So that's why today we focus more on uh, enterprises uh, instead of uh, small and medium businesses. So Satish, when you also spoke about uh, some of your work experience with Amazon and Microsoft, would you also like to tell us how the journey was with Microsoft and Amazon and then Taxi Bootstore? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, and I'll also cover... Uh, working with sorry? large corporations and then startups. 
So yeah, that's why I mean, I'll also include the uh, the startup uh, in New York where I worked. Um, so my first job was uh, Microsoft uh, out of campus. I joined there. Um, again, absolutely thrilled to join uh, a company like that. It was a dream uh, at that time. And, uh, you know, three years I worked there, you know, absolutely fabulous experience working there. Um, but at the same time, um, I was itching to do more. I was itching to uh, really challenge myself uh, and move a lot faster, right? Because one thing that really frustrated me to no end was that I was just building stuff, right? Continuously, we were building uh, for three years, right? Worked on uh, two products, but none of them saw the light of the day, right? Nowhere did customers actually use it. So what was very frustrating was I built all of this, but I have no idea if I'm actually impacting somebody's life, right? Sure. After that, uh, the next company I worked for was a startup. And uh, again, very smart. This was uh, the startup in New York. Very smart people, a lot of... Uh, uh, learning for me, built a lot of uh, very interesting things. Again, both of these jobs were as uh, software engineers, but honestly, the job itself didn't matter. Uh, other people in the company are also experiencing similar things. Um, and over there, I was uh, there for a year and a half. And I had similar experiences where I built a lot of stuff, but nothing was actually used by customers. So again, very frustrated, really wanted to be in a place where I know what I'm doing, how it is impacting customers' lives. So went to Amazon and specifically in their cloud computing division called AWS. Some of my friends were there. They said uh, very good things about it. So I wanted to be there. And I was there for two years. Um, the idea there was uh, I'll be there only for two years. I decided after that that I'll want to come back to India. So I decided 2012 I'll uh, come back to India. So I knew when I was joining there that I'm going to leave this company in two years. So I did my best to learn as much as possible. Fabulous uh, work culture. Although when I was there, I didn't uh, really enjoy it because, you know, um, it takes a certain kind of a person to enjoy that kind of uh, pain at uh, Amazon. But uh, but yeah, learned a lot over there, uh, you know, fabulous culture in terms of, uh, you know, taking ownership, uh, really putting customer experience first. You know, people, a lot of things that uh, people talk about uh, Amazon, every day, every employee is living that, right? And so that has been one thing that I've taken uh, with me. Um, so after my after I came back to India, did my MBA, and then I joined uh, Taxi for sure, first as a product manager for the app. And then I took over the entire uh, product management uh, team and I was heading that. Um, uh, interestingly, on the first day, I told the founders that more than a job, I'm thinking of this as a learning experience. Um, that time when I joined, I was uh, uh, 30. Uh, I just turned 30. Uh, and I told them that uh, I'm looking at this uh, as a learning experience so that I can start my own company at the age of 40. So, uh, and that's what uh, I told them on the first day. But uh, within two years, the company grew to a massive uh, scale um, and they, the founders uh, sold the company also for a variety of reasons. And uh, yeah, so I, I got a chance to start up. Sorry? Absolutely. I think all of us are very familiar with the story of Taxi for sure. Right, right. So, so that was a dream run for the company start to finish. It was uh, a little less than four years. The company sold for 200 million. Uh, one of the top five exits uh, for any company in India so far. Um, but yeah, so what I told the founders on day one, I was actually able to do not at the age of 40, but at the age of 32. And uh, so far uh, going five years strong in this journey and uh, in all credit to uh, founders of uh, Taxi for sure, the team over there, which gave me that confidence and the other companies where I worked, where um, at that time I didn't realize all the skills that I was learning, the network that I was building. But really, every one of those experiences contributed to uh, what I'm able to do today. Huge congratulations for doing that. Uh, Satesh, we also want to understand when did you exactly quit your job? And what was the moment of quitting your job and then starting your own company? Yeah, so the origin of Rocketium was actually an idea I had uh, in 2005. I was one year into my job um, and I was thinking about, uh, you know, what am I doing to become better? Right? And I was thinking, I'm not taking any effort to become better. There must be a lot of people like me who want to become better, but not really taking that effort. So what if in five minutes, 10 minutes of consuming bite-sized content, could we not become better, right? So I always wanted to create an app that could help people do this. So um, when Taxi for Sure was sold to Ola, there was a chance for us, all of us to join Ola. Uh, April 1st, we would have had to join. Right? But whoever uh, didn't want to join Ola for a variety of reasons could have uh, had to leave by March 31st. So that uh, I took as an opportunity because uh, I wanted to start up. It was an idea that I had uh, in my mind uh, since 2005. So 2015, March 31st was my last day at Taxi for sure. April 1st, it's a very 
a nice day to start a new company especially a startup uh, so that was my uh, founding date of rocketium but like i said the idea was uh, already 10 years old at that time and of course uh, like i said the whole game based learning idea is what evolved into what rocketium is today sure so uh, would you like to describe your journey as an entrepreneur and your journey as an employee working with a large corporation uh would you like to talk about how it was a life changing experience for you yeah absolutely so um uh, i can talk in uh, two two different terms and uh, sure. again i'll share a little more uh, about my own private uh, you know how i operate right and um, sure. it will give you some sense of uh, how things have uh, changed uh, with me right <clears throat> so um, and it's not so much uh, because i was an employee it's also um, again, maybe it was i don't know so um my life till about 30 um this was where i was uh, a team member uh, you know reporting to you know 10 levels of people above me i didn't really have a team and so on most of my life by that time was governed by fear right and i don't mean fear in a bad sense right somewhere fear is also very good thing that is what sure. motivates you uh, when you get nervous just before talking uh, in public when uh, you get butterflies in your stomach before making uh, Uh, you, you know asking your boss for a salary or you know any number of uh, those things right so sure. fear is actually a good thing it makes you rational it makes you um, be very careful about what you are doing it avoids uh, you f- from taking unnecessary risk so i would say that phase of my life was primarily governed by fear so it was oh if i don't do this i'm going to get deported if i don't do this i'm not uh, my job i'm going to get fired from my job i used to have uh, those kinds of uh, dreams at times that you know i'm going to get fired or whatever right again performance was good everything was good but i i was just using fear as a way to motivate myself that hey i don't want to get fired i don't want something bad to happen to me so i want to work very hard right so about the time when i joined taxi for sure that was uh, just a two year period but after that especially as an entrepreneur the whole thing switched it was no longer fear that was guiding me right so fear i would say for the most part has completely disappeared from my life it is not what governs my life anymore right so that has been a big shift uh, since becoming an entrepreneur i've been able to take a lot more risk again risk was something i was always uh, taking but um, yeah and uh, so now i'm no longer scared that oh if i say something to somebody how will they feel right uh, it has unblocked a lot of things in my mind right i'm more free when i say stuff to people i'm very honest um i can uh, i'm unburdened from uh, you know feeling 10 things and then saying one thing right so uh, you know somewhere people are also more accommodating they also understand if you're a founder you have less time uh, you can be a little more uh, direct uh, i try not to be rude that is definitely one thing i don't like to do i don't like to uh, do that but uh definitely i am a lot more direct you know earlier i would have been very scared to say certain things uh, now that is no longer the case um but yeah otherwise uh, entrepreneurship uh, in itself i wouldn't say that uh, for you to have a transformation journey for you to uh, show phenomenal ownership for something you need to be an entrepreneur right i would uh, recommend everybody to think of entrepreneur more as a mindset right are you if you see something fallen on the road are you waiting for the next person to pick it up if you see a uh, crappy code that somebody has written are you waiting for somebody to tell you to fix it or are you going to do it it's just the whole mindset right i don't think everybody needs to be ceo i don't think a ceo does a lot of things that uh, other people cannot do and uh, it's a very prestigious job right i don't think anybody needs to be ceo right work needs to get done whether it's uh, at home as a citizen or in the workplace and anybody who does it well they are an entrepreneur that that's a that's a very insightful learning Uh, so Satish, would you also like to talk to us about some of the challenges that you faced while you were setting up Rocketium? Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> maybe some the, of the technical um, side and some of the management side. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, um, you know, one thing which I would say, which I kind of experienced firsthand, was uh, a reset that happens uh, to your social profile. right earlier if you are in a company the company is doing well you are an exec over there everybody wants a job in that company people are constantly asking you hey can you come and give a talk somewhere can you come on stage and give an award can you mentor somebody a lot of those things are not because of who you are it is because of you having a certain designation and the company being at a certain stage <clears throat> sure. right so a lot of that was going on and suddenly when uh, you know i i left taxi for sure none of the brands mattered right where i had done my masters you know how many years of experience whatever i had done didn't really matter i was pretty much on a back to square one right what does that mean if i have to ask somebody for help 
this could be somebody i worked with somebody i have personally helped any of those right they are not under any obligation to help you they look at you as oh this person is back to square one they don't have funding i mean somewhere all of us are busy they are not sure. bad people right but i have to optimize my time no i have 20 things uh, that are asking for my time how do i prioritize if mm-hmm. some random person is asking for my time i would rather not do that but let's say boss is asking somebody else is asking i'll spend time there right so a lot of that happened so that was one big revelation that you know it didn't matter what my network was how much i've helped somebody any of those things right i was back to zero i had to do everything from scratch and again when i say i i mean my co-founder the other uh, founding team members said right? so a lot of rocket team's journey was and uh, i i'll say most of uh, what happens today also for the most part we have had to do completely on our own right we haven't had uh, you know our investors have been very helpful a lot of uh, you know support they have shown but for the most part everything we have had to do on our own right so it was just like getting a huge rock we had to get it moving right and once you get it moving once there is momentum it starts rolling then a lot of people will come and support and uh, it just uh, gets a little bit easier but early days nobody believes in you nobody wants uh, you to succeed everybody asks but why are you doing this does the world really need this right so a lot of those questions will come so a lot of those are really the challenges uh, in terms of uh, technical challenges uh, you know technical could mean in sales marketing uh, engineering everywhere uh, if you are doing something new uh, people don't know about it uh, you have to it's a product challenge to build it right that itself does not exist not a lot of people know how it has to be built so figuring those things out uh, learning a lot about uh, new technologies you know stumbling uh, over there uh, and same way now sales and marketing you as a company nobody know about right you specific individuals definitely nobody knows about and in that getting people to be interested trying your product giving feedback uh, paying for you for it right all of those are big challenges so again all of it is that zero to one you have a huge sphere of uh, dense material you have to get it to move right and it's not easy to get it to move seems like a lot of inspiration from beta thiel isn't it what is that i said seems like a lot of inspiration from beta thiel the yeah, zero yeah, to one smart guy but yeah zero to one is uh, yeah sure. you you actually you actually zero. live that because everything is zero for you initially team absolutely. is zero absolutely. product is zero everything is zero absolutely uh so uh, one of the co-founders at lehas and also the viva currently atul has a question for you uh yeah so what do use case people use rocket team the most yeah so uh, the number one use case for rocket team today is i have a large team of designers who have to keep creating similar sort of uh, banners or videos for ads for in app use and so on right so just as an example after this uh, live session when you have a chance open any e-commerce app right flipkart mintra lenskart whatever you want right you'll see large number of banners over there so when you see those banners you will see that there is a very similar structure to it product image is here some text is here price is here discount is here but all of those are made manually with photoshop so it takes a long time for a designer to do this so what rocketium does is whether you are a marketer or a merchandising person or a product person you are relying on a central design team to keep manually making hundreds thousands of these things so where rocketium comes in is these business teams work with us and equip their design teams or other teams to be able to make these images and videos at scale so that you are now defining a structure defining a template and then somebody is just replacing one or two of those elements if you have a spreadsheet with a thousand of your product photos and product price and name and all of that you can import a spreadsheet and then 1000 of these things you can make in one shot right again sure. more features and all are there but the primary use case is what a team of designers uh, does with photoshop or uh, you know video tools that we are able to templateize standardize and automate so he also has another question which is what kind of people or institutes use rocket in the most and if i were to reframe the question i would ask uh, what does your user acquisition funnel what proportion of that is consumers uh, who are divided into smes and larger corporations yeah what, so what does uh, user acquisition funnel look like what percentage of them are there right right yeah so i'll answer uh, both the questions so first uh, i'll just say that what kind of customers do we have um about 2 years ago when we were purely uh, an online video creation software our customers used to be um social media marketers small business owners um and almost consumer kind of uh, use cases connectivity side like connectivity no problem can you hear me uh, okay now satesh we lost your connectivity part is it okay now seem seem some difficulty with the connectivity yeah it's better it's better 
Okay, good. Yeah. So um, I was saying that. So about two years ago, Rocketium was primarily an online video creation tool, right? There was no image support. There was no automation, things like that. So the primary use case uh, for uh, our customers was I'm a social media marketer in a small and medium sized company. I'm a small business owner. I want to create social videos, right? So just very simple a slideshow kind of video. That was primarily, primarily the case until end of 2018. Today, our customers are primarily and 90% of our revenue comes from this is uh, mid market and enterprise customers. So mid market would be uh, you know, companies of a certain size, enterprise would be companies which are larger than a 500,000 employees kind of a thing, right? So um, these are the customers that we have uh, today. Uh, they are spread over industries, but uh, primarily our buyers would be marketers and product people and uh, designers would uh, be also stakeholder. They will also be users for our product, right? Uh, now in terms of uh, the customer acquisition funnel, again, if I had to talk about two years ago, uh, it was just people coming to our website, signing up and paying for it. Can you hear me okay? Some challenge on the connectivity. I think I lost it for the last 10 seconds. Okay, okay. Uh, are you sure it's not your network? Uh, yeah, I think pretty much. Because... Okay, okay. No worries. I, I'll just repeat myself. So, uh, what I was saying was, uh, uh, two years ago, the uh, customer acquisition funnel was very simple. Like most... Uh, uh, SaaS products, people used to come to our website, see the product, check out the pricing, swipe their credit card and start using. Today, the funnel is, um, it's still primarily inbound, uh, but we have started doing outbound as well. So inbound is people searching on Google, Quora, whatever, they come across Rocketium, somebody recommends it, they see a review, whatever, right? Sure. Then they come to our website, they see what our products are, they fill out a form saying, this is the use case I have in mind. I want a demo of the product. And somebody in the team does a demo for them and uh, we are able to convert uh, them into a paying customer. Now, outbound is where we have identified a few use cases. So e-commerce companies and so on, right? Um, where we go to them and we say that, hey, these are the customers that we work with. Uh, here are two or three use cases uh, that you can work with us uh, where we can help you. And uh, again, demo and closing and all of that happens after that, right? So that's how the funnel looks uh, primarily. So I would say about 90% uh, of our business uh, is inbound, 10% is uh, outbound. Sure. And what's your revenue model at Rocketium, uh, if you'd like to talk about it, today? And also, yeah. uh, what's the funding features on the company so far? Yeah, of course. So uh, revenue model for Rocketium is... Um, today we charge people basis what they get out of uh, working with Rocket Team, right? So we charge them basis the number of images and videos that they create with Rocket Team. Whether they use uh, a user interface, whether they use our API to create stuff uh, programmatically or their users created, the number of creators is the primary access on which we charge people, right? So uh, the way Rocket Team charges is we charge a platform fee. It could be anywhere uh, from you know one lakh to five lakh uh, kind of a thing a month. Um, after that, uh, you know, that comes with some sort of support from our team. Uh, we have a strong account management team that uh, helps customers. There is a design team that also helps them. Um, and at the same time, uh, that uh, platform fee gets you a certain number of creatives. Once those creatives are done, if you, let's say, want more creatives, you uh, pre-commit to some number of uh, images or videos that you want. And then the pricing is based on that. So it's mostly volume based and uh, there is also a platform fee. Uh, coming to your question about uh, funding, Rocketium has raised a little over a million dollars so far uh, and our investors, one of them I'm wearing their t-shirt only, it's called uh, Bloom Ventures. Uh, the other one is called uh, One Crowd, uh, which is a consortium of a number of uh, you know, very high powered angel investors as well as their own fund. Apart from that, we've raised money from uh, some angel investors, so people from Taxi for Sure, Big Basket, uh, SpaceX, Apple, Microsoft, Freshworks and so on. Sure. So do you have any PPC video tips for the businesses you want to share or something? Some tips on this? Yeah, so uh, the number one tip that I would give is that uh, people's uh, behavior is changing, right? Like I was saying, people are spending more and more time on mobile devices. Um, attention spans are short. So what you want to do is you want to engage people in a way that they want to be engaged, right? You can't rely on... Uh, obviously, search ads are really powerful. They will continue to be there because they are more intent driven, right? But everywhere else, you have to figure out how your messaging can be more visual, right? If you're sending push notifications, consider putting something more visual over there, right? I mean, such a simple thing when LinkedIn 
uh, used to send me uh, a meeting uh, an invite request before it just used to say okay giri marpani has invited you to connect or you know satesh sir has invited you to connect now they started showing a photograph of that person right so such a small change it invites you it wants you connect uh, and click on that right so similarly uh, when you are sending out push notifications as a small business web push uh, you know push over uh, app uh, an email is also a push channel right so consider putting gifs over there consider putting uh, uh, image when it comes to video especially but also the case with uh, images that a lot of people think that i have made one and that's enough right this is what i will use now i'll put all my money behind it and that is what people will have to watch right but that's a big mistake because uh, i'll just give you an example the blue color links that you see on google that was not one color that google said oh this is the color that we want to use google ran experiments with thousands of shades of blue slight variations between them just to see which one performs better than the other because a 0.1% improvement in that means hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue mm-hmm. right so uh, that is the level at which a company like a google experiments right so for you to say i will make one video and for the next one month two months every user will see that is a big mistake so you want to cater uh, to different user segments you want to tailor that message that you have yeah. you want to tailor that uh, to different uh, segments that you have mm-hmm. and for some of these businesses uh, what metrics should they be exactly tracking for video ads is it different for small businesses visa is to large corporations or is it standard for everybody yeah so if you think about your ads you can uh, break it down into two broad categories right one is your branding awareness uh, you sure, know generally sure. outreach uh, kind of ads right where the goal is not necessarily something measurable that oh so many people see this i am going to get this out of it it's an important category of uh, ads that you have to do right and there you will measure stuff like number of page views number of likes number of views number of engagement and so on and over a long period of time you will be able to track stuff like okay how many people are talking about you right uh, share of uh, mind share of voice those kinds of things the other is your other category is your performance ads right when it comes to performance ads whether you do uh, uh, banner ads social ads search ads uh, video ads everywhere when it comes to performance the idea is very simple you absolutely need to have a metric that you are trying to measure right are you just measuring the number of people who are coming to your page are you measuring the sales that are happening are you checking the number of leads that you are getting to be very clear about what that uh, metric is right and uh, you have to keep optimizing for that right and one way you can optimize for that is uh, you know just to have this kick ass absolutely amazing message right but that's uh, a myth right because no message that you have will be so amazing that it will work for everybody and it will be perfect you have to segment people you have to show the right message to different people and you have to keep experimenting and if you have a north star metric saying i am trying to drive my sign ups or i am trying to drive the number of people who download an ebook or whatever that is uh, the metric that you should try uh, uh, to optimize satesh if you'd like to also talk about what are some of the biggest misconceptions you see around video advertising in your experience so far yeah so uh, i would say the number one uh, misconception that uh, people have is uh, this right that i have a tv ad i am going to just chop it into 6 seconds chop it into 15 seconds i'm going to now put it up uh, on youtube and i'm going to see magic right i'm going to use that same exactly what i put on youtube same thing landscape video i'm going to put on uh, instagram and i'm going to see magic right that's really a big mistake right you have to tailor the content that you're creating to the platform to the segment of people who are seeing it you have to create a different piece of content for linkedin you have to create something slightly different from youtube instagram because the context of why somebody is on that platform is different the um, you know mind space that they have to check out new things has to be different so you can't just take a tv commercial chop it up and put it in different places you have to tailor it you have to uh, keep experimenting and uh, the other thing like i said uh, if you don't experiment enough if you're not trying to personalize it to individual segments enough that's a big mistake So you spoke about different platforms. My question is, uh, do you think different types of videos at different stages of the company also is required in the digital sales funnel? Yeah, absolutely. So if you are a Cisco or a Microsoft or somebody, it's absolutely okay for you to make, you know, spend millions of dollars on brand building. Because what will you make an ad for? If you are a Cisco, you have hundreds of products, right? You have like twenty subsidiaries. What will you make? You won't make a product ad just for one of those, right? So. Uh, at that stage you will make more branding ads 
where you know talking about a big broad message saying that you know and again nobody is going to see an ad for cisco and make a multi million dollar purchase because of it right so their goal is more being top of mind uh, you know showing that we are a company of a certain type and we are cool and those kinds of things when you are a smaller company you can't spend a lot of money on brand building right so uh, at most you could uh, you know show a little bit of uh, you know those uh, branding awareness building ads to people before uh, you hit them with more uh, you know as you think of that funnel the top of funnel ads that you would have would be more broader about that space and stuff like that when you come to middle of funnel you are talking about how my product is better than some other product or you know sure. how somebody is getting a benefit from it when you come to bottom of the funnel you have to do stuff like you know so much discount buy now offer ending those kinds of things so uh you have to go through those uh, stages when you're a large company you can afford not to do some of the other things and focus mostly on top of funnel so what's the kind of roi should i expect uh, as a company who can be use your product uh, from video ad campaign to uh, my previous metrics which i was using before before video came into picture so could you repeat that question please so what's the kind of an roi difference should i be expecting by a video ad campaign on some of the social media platforms uh, using your product please have to what i was doing before before the video was introduced in my discussion Correct. so so just to clarify rocket team is not just video it's also banners so static uh, images also you want to make so today our customers are kind of 50 50 both the videos as well as images they are doing so the number one benefit that they get from uh, rocket team is that i don't have to keep relying on designers every time i want to make a change so what i am talking about saying you want to tailor stuff to every platform you want to tailor stuff to every segment you have to keep experimenting for that you need a large number of creatives so the roi that you will get when you are let's say your conversion has doubled that doubles sure. because not so much that rocketium has done some magic but because we are helping you experiment more we are helping you tailor more which without rocketium you would have spent weeks just waiting on designers because designers have to take that much time right the tools that they use are designer tools professional tools uh, to make you know harry potter movie if you want to right you're using that same thing to make a quick you know 6 second video ad it'll take you know 5 minutes to render right in rocket team it is 6 second ad renders in 10 seconds right you can't beat that so uh, marketers are quickly able to experiment i i want to try uh, you know offer i want to try try now buy now shop now i can make five of those things but i can make it go live right that's why our customers are seeing you know 2x 3x 5x roi Uh, primarily because you are able to experiment more satish uh, what is your advice to some of these entrepreneurs who are starting up now after the covid scenario and what are some of the hurdles in your opinion that you think has kept an entrepreneur away from trying what he wants to yeah so uh, uh, so the first question about uh, you know post covid what's going to happen again all of us are really trying to figure that out for uh, our own businesses what's really the world going to look like Uh, but one thing is very clear uh, obviously in the long run economic activity will uh, catch up people will want stuff everybody's uh, you know prosperity is going to go up but uh, in the short term people will be very skeptical of spending money right they will uh, a lot of people would have lost jobs a lot of uh, people will be skeptical of making new bets so um, anything that uh, can save people uh, time they can save people money uh, that can help businesses do stuff uh, with fewer people Uh, or if you are selling as a b2c app something that can um, you know save people money you know help them earn money any of those would be fabulous uh, things to do just in the short term when i say short term i mean the next 6 uh, months to 2 to 2 and a half years uh, kind of a thing right but in the long run any business uh, that is adding fundamental value and filling a big gap that company is always going to do well right because these are all things that are going to be um, you know always going to be needed right you're not doing some gimmick not trying to uh you know you know cheat people not trying to get them to buy something they don't need i mean how many people buy again not to be little uh, any one company or the other right but how many times is a person going to buy a mattress right <laughs> once in my life right should i spend all my life trying to market to that uh, audience and you know trying to build a brand once i'll buy a mattress right i mean some of those you really should think about the unit economics and really over a long term does it make sense to be in a certain kind of a business obviously if you are selling mattresses and the idea is that after that anything to do with the bedroom and then rest of the house i'll be a home furnishing company that totally makes sense sure right so, uh, and uh, sure yeah sorry ahead. then you had the no, other question of uh, uh, you know what is preventing entrepreneurs from uh, taking the plunge and uh, starting up uh, uh, like i said fear 
fear is a big uh, uh, you know motivator uh, it is what prevents us from you know all of us when we stand at the edge of a building we have that half thought that you know i'm going to go to the edge and i'm going to jump right everybody has those kinds of thoughts so uh, a startup is like that right everybody has this thought ki no no i want to take a plunge you know corporate job sucks you know boss sucks or whatever i want to be my own manager i want to start up but fear and a uh, very good kind of fear prevents them from doing that because um i'm not going to say some cliche like oh it you have to be crazy to start a company or something you don't have to be crazy right uh, it's not at all crazy to start a company if you figured out there is a need that uh, exists in the market if you feel you are the right person to solve that absolutely not crazy right it's crazy not to start a company but at the same time if you're doing it for the glamour of it if you're doing because you don't want a boss or uh, hey, i want to be on the magazine or so and so there are other ways to get that thing right i don't think uh, starting a company is the right thing for that right so if you have a strong burning need to uh, solve a certain problem no other avenue is giving you that uh, if you want to create um, an organization that can last for 50 100 years you know for all you want you can start a company but yeah for most people i would recommend where you are you can be entrepreneurs right most of your bosses want you to be enterprising take on more risk come to them with a solution saying boss we can do this right we can increase our revenue 2x we can improve our app retention 2x your boss wants you to do that right you can be an entrepreneur within your company so be an entrepreneur and then an entrepreneur is what you saying yeah yeah absolutely the world uh, doesn't need 1 billion ceos sure i think the biggest challenge that i have come across across all of my portfolio companies is there is one problem which is relevant to all of them is hiring right so uh, can you tell us about some of the challenges that you faced during your hiring session and i i'm sure a lot of viewers want to intern with rocket em or we to find a job with rocket em what are the kind of people that you don't want to meet during your hiring session and what did you learn about how to hire right let's not show that you figured out everything in the journey of rocket em so right right so uh, so for the most part i would say that hiring has not been a problem for us uh, i know a lot of people especially people in bangalore complain that we are not able to find good talent uh, there are there was this long thread of uh, other founders uh, which uh, where i got added where they are talking about all kinds of stuff they are doing to win them over they send gifts they send like all kinds of things um and i'm glad i didn't read that 5 uh, years ago because then i would have wasted time doing stuff like that right most people didn't want all kinds of uh, jazzy stuff um you know or any of those things to convince them we are very upfront about what they were getting into we we call all of the team members at rocket team founding team members right we tell them this is your company this is your chance to uh you know observe things that you don't like and bring up and make those changes because all of us are trying to build a company we want to work for right so a lot of those messages i think uh, really resonated with them um you know we are, all the time we try to put ourselves in the shoes of the rest of the team right how would i feel if i were not involved in decision making how would i feel if i were not told certain things how would i feel if we were building products or certain any number of things so you always have, try to have that third person's uh, point of view and even when we hire we try to do that right we try to understand what is it that they are going through we try to cover those points in a lot of those cases i very directly tell them right that hey what are you worried about will fail right ask me those questions i am happy to answer all of them right a lot of them preemptively we tell them so that i think builds a lot of trust people are able to uh, you know trust that they can come to a place like this do what they want to do uh one place where we have had a challenge uh, has been in hiring female uh, team members right that has been a big challenge for us um and it really starts from uh, not having enough people who apply or uh, even uh, when recruiters uh, get us people right uh, they had a ch- you know big challenge in uh, helping us hire female uh, team members um, so we've had a couple of them now but uh, really uh, it's a ratio i'm not happy with uh, sure. and again uh, it's not uh, about diversity or those kinds of things right uh, we try to have diversity in everything that we do right uh, we invite whenever we are doing something you say let's say i'm sending a pitch deck or whatever else right i send that out i ask people that how can i make it better right what's wrong with this can you help me make it better right so not having female employees not having people uh, of a diverse background is really uh, preventing us from uh, really hearing every kind of voice so so that sure. is one area where we have uh, struggled so far sure otherwise so yeah you... the people sure now i just uh, adding one more thing that uh, rocket team has just finished 5 years uh the people who joined us have first uh, team member second team member most of those people are still with us today right so uh, and the people who have left uh, you know one of them i'm very happy to say has uh, gone on to start a new uh, company his company is uh, doing pretty well they are also seed funded uh, one more person went back to his family business so 
uh, we are happy that uh, people who leave uh, rocketium they are able to go through uh, to the next thing that they do with uh, rich experiences i think it's purely your leadership and management style that you've been yeah, able to find a good talent and uh, of course you're too uh, kind man uh, yeah. i mean i would say that because every portfolio company founder i meet only has one talent to really help me find a good talent uh so this talk to me about some of your growth plans and who do you consider as some of your competitors right so in terms of uh, growth right now um, what will be the number one most important thing for rocketium is to have a repeatable predictable scalable model right where sure. uh, where we are able to predict and uh, that is something that we've been seeing in the last 6 months right where we set certain numbers for ourselves saying that these many leads we want these many wins we want this much new revenue this much upgrade and for the last 6 months we've been able to hit that right obviously with uh, uh, covid 19 coming uh, there is unpredictability in new business there are uh, some of our customers who are saying hey we absolutely cannot pay our business has been hit so so those things uh, are there which are interfering with the plans but uh, we have at least gotten to a stage where we have uh, you know quite a good visibility into the next 3 months 6 months kind of a thing so moving forward rocketium will be at a stage where uh we'll be able to predict for the next 2 uh, or 3 years also right uh, you know very clear plan saying this is how we are going to get customers uh, and rocketium business is uh, fairly global today um I- india is uh, a big part uh, but most of our revenue comes from outside uh, india right so being able to pick one or two geographies expanding over there uh, and getting to that uh, repeatable uh, new revenue model that's really uh, going to be the current focus for us absolutely uh sure so j- just jumping away from the business questions asking you last one or two questions uh would you like to start a new company every given year or would you like to continue rocketium for rest of your career yeah so uh my answer is both and this is an understanding that i had uh, when i visited uh, china in 2018 right so I- i'll give you a quick uh, background right so my co-founder anurag and i both had uh, this idea that we want to create tremendous impact right and anurag uh, likes to say that hey i want to operate in a place where i can create for example 10 million jobs that's the number that he talks about right so um always in our mind when we had started it was that hey rocketium should reach some sort of success it should give us uh, credibility it should give us uh, you know some financial uh, cushion so that we can then deploy to the next thing that we do and that will be the one where we can have a massive impact right but when i visited china in 2018 we met uh, people from xiaomi we met people from qualcomm and these were their corporate venture capital teams so sure. there i had this realization that these companies have done so well they generate so much cash they have so much uh, customer trust that they have won that they are able to keep aside some part of that money every year and invest in startups right that's when i realized rocketium doesn't have to be one step of a journey right it can be a continuing journey where if rocketium is successful if we are generating enough cash if we have enough customer trust we are a known brand that let's say government of uh, india wants to work with government of other countries wants to work with then whether it is any sort of humanitarian efforts whether it is non profits whether it's funding startups whether it is starting new subsidiaries any number of the acquiring other companies any number of those things can be done so really how we like to think is we are very curious people we want to be innovative we want to do new things all the time right and one way to do that is through the umbrella of rocketium itself so we don't have to yeah. sell the company to somebody make some money to do the next thing right we have a good team we have some understanding of the market why leave all of that and again go to square one sure so lastly a funny question but uh, at just to uh, add something some thrill to this uh, would you like to suggest a movie name uh, which represents your life during the lockdown or i think most people will say groundhog day I don't know if you watched that movie, but sure. yeah, sure. yeah. So, so right. every day is pretty much the same. But uh, but yeah, uh, again, our core tenet of uh, Rocketium is that we strive to be better every day. So you know, every day finding out uh, you know something new to do, something better uh, that I can keep myself, uh, my wife, uh, everybody occupied with. Satej, any shout outs for your team, investors, mentors, advisors? for shaping the journey of rocket team would you like yeah to man all of them uh, just uh, two minute to name but uh, you know honestly uh, we are uh, our entire team is somebody with a very uh, open uh, mindset a growth mindset so any feedback we get any positive negative whatever right from customers from uh, competitors lot of competitors we are constantly in touch with we keep talking to them so you know we are constantly learning from everybody so you know everybody who's interacted with us in any way 
has uh, contributed to this journey so you now we are really grateful we have this opportunity to do this you know, not a lot of people have the fortune to uh, you know survive in a in an industry this long have the opportunity to serve customers uh, you know from so many countries so many industries uh, so much so you know, really grateful for this journey thank you so much satesh for joining us today i no, have had this kind of an insightful discussion for the longest time i know now thank you so much for joining us i'm happy to be a part of this i really enjoyed this and uh, uh, looking forward to doing more such sessions thank you so much satej thanks so much for taking your time out thank you bye bye